Why am I here today? Because Trent rang me. <laughs> and he asked me to come down and talk a little bit about understanding the people in your team. I said, how many days have I got? <laughs> he said, you've got one hour. So I've got one hour to try and help you guys understand a little bit more the people in your team. Because at the end of the day, I think what you'll find is, you can know all you want about advertising and running your business and cooking, healthy meals and everything else, but probably the biggest challenge to you, you're a good shot from there, is dealing with the people in your team, dealing with the PCs, dealing with the parents and dealing with all of the other people that are in the world, what you do every day. So I'm going to try and keep it as simple as I can and just give you some simple tools so you can walk away. What do we need to do? To understand our people. What's the one skill that we use to understand our people? Say again? Listening. Listening which is part of communication. Does that make sense? So communication is a big skill that we need to have to be able to deal with people. Yet when you think back to school and you think back to your formal education, how much of your formal education was spent around communication skills? People behavior skills. Zero? Maybe 10%? Maybe when you got to grade 12, you went off on a camp and they did a Mars Bridge program or something which you're very weak. In general, very, very little of a formal education is around communication. Yet when we get out into the workforce, or we get into relationships, or we step out into the real world, what's the one skill that we use more than any other skill? Communication. And yet nobody has ever sat down and thought us how to communicate. The only people that thought us how to communicate were our parents. And hands up here wants to grow up like their mother. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Because that's what we end up being. We, get, we, we learn our skills from our parents. So we end up being as good a communicator as your parents were. My parents were very good communicators. I was. Some people say I was born with a gift. I wasn't. My, my parents taught me how to communicate. But I went to school and nobody taught me how to communicate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, today, just try and break down a little bit of the science behind communication. <coughs> do you know what I mean by science? It's just something you can learn. Okay? It's just something that's put up in front of you that you can start to go, oh, that's why he does that, or that's why she does that. How do I take that and move it forward? I'm going to talk today around preferences and what we prefer to do. Is that okay with everyone? Let's see if I can get this thing to work. I don't normally work with uh, Floyd shows. As adults, how do we learn? By doing. Okay? That's how we learn. We have to do something to learn. That said, it's not just the doing, because I know people who do the same thing over and over again and don't learn anything. There's a few things we do afterwards, but the key important thing is that we need to do something. And Jonathan spoke about it at the end of his speech, where he said, go away and try something. Because the only way you're going to learn from what he just went through is to go away and try. And get it wrong. Because when you get it wrong, you sit back and you go, hmm, what worked, what didn't work, what would I change? You change what you do and you implement it again. That's the cycle of adult learning. Do something, reflect on what you've done, take a little bit of time out, analyze what you've done, and then change what you've done and put it through. So what I'm going to try and do today is I'm going to try and get you to experience a little bit around type preference. And I took a bit of a gamble. I thought, well, there's six seats so there are always going to be some people who don't like sitting beside other people. So there's only going to be five in every row. Gee, it's busy. So there's almost six in every row. So we have a little bit of a challenge. What I'd like you to do is just very quickly, as we go through this, and we've only got a couple of minutes, just grab five people. So there's four there, maybe one from behind. There's four there. Just grab five people. And what I'd like you to do is just very quickly in that five people, I'd like one person to volunteer to come up here and present a little bit of this 
speech first. I'd like two people to give me a bit of a hand because we're going to have to rearrange the room. Alright, so just to rearrange the chairs a little bit. I would like one person just to document the group activities and then I would like one other person to go outside of the room and become part of the group. Do you get the idea that we all have preferences? Yeah? And some people prefer to do what I do. I actually really enjoy getting up and doing this. I'm not stressed. Or I'm in any way, shape, or form. I'm actually very excited by being here. There are other people who would rather get out that door and run as fast as possible rather than come up here. So you noticed when I said, I want one person to come up here and speak. Did you see the level of language in the Everything went up on <laughs> There is no way I'm getting up there to do it, all right? Yet there was a couple of people who may have said, yeah, I don't mind that. That wouldn't be too bad as long as I know what I have to talk about. Or you know what? Even if I don't know what I have to talk about, as long as you keep it. Well, we, that's it. They, they have a preference for coming on. Other people have a preference for just doing the basic stuff. I won't call it basic stuff. For doing what I call the work. They're the doers. We need to rearrange the room. Yep, I'm in. I'll do that because that's work. What he's doing up there is not work. <laughs> it is because I get paid for it. <laughs> it's just your definition of work is different than my definition of work. All right, so. Some people have a preference for doing work, other people have a preference for talking. And in my experience working with teams, quite a while now, this causes the biggest friction. There are groups of people who like talking. <laughs> and there are groups of people who like doing. And when you put those two groups of people together, Oh, I have branches. Okay, that's what I'm going to speak about today. I'm going to try and give you very quickly my understanding of how we can break down the talkers and the doers. Is that okay? Which one's right? Which one's wrong? Why do we need both? Someone's going to do the work. <laughs> <laughs> we know we're here. And <laughs> Someone's got to do the work. But someone's got to sell the work as well. Yeah. Right, because if you have a product that you're just in big and nobody's selling it, you're going to have a lot of product. So there need to be people selling it. One of the things those people are very, very good at is resourcing things. Tuck shops don't run without funding. They don't run without volunteers. They don't run without, they probably could run without volunteers. <laughs> They don't run without having the resources that you need to make them happen. Some people are very good at getting onto resources, getting people on board and playing the game. But they also don't run without people doing the things that need to be done on a daily basis. So if you have a group of talkers, nothing gets done. If you have a group of doers, the same thing gets done over and over and over again. And what's happened to tuck shops in the last 10 years? Because when I grew up, all we got was pies sausage rolls and things we actually wanted to eat. <laughs> now that James we're all of a sudden we're not tuck shop conveyors anymore, we are nutritionists. Okay, and we're expecting to be nutritionists. That's a big word for nourishment. Um, and as the years go by, that role is coming on more and more and more as people pass responsibility from themselves onto other people for how the kids look, or the energy levels that their kids have, or the fact that their kids aren't passing exams because they don't have energy levels. And all of these other things are coming in. So the world is changing. I know you're going through, it's going to get worse. The world is changing until the world starts to make sense of itself. Okay? So you do need people that can talk. You do need people that can gain resources. You do need creative people. But we also need people that can So I'm going to try and break them down for today as simply as I can. A very complex uh, 
discussion as soon as I can. And hopefully at the end of the day, you'll walk away with something that you can do. Not something that you come and hear from the street. Something that you can do to change how you do. A lot of references. I did that one. I just want you to think a little bit about what your preferences were when we did that exercise. <laughs> Because the key to communication is understanding yourself first and who you are. The key to any growth, the key to any success is understanding who you are and what you do. And then modifying what you do to suit other people. But it has to start with understanding who you are. So if you get nothing out of today, I just want you to think about which type of person or what preference you had around that exercise that you just did. Where are you the type of person? that wanted to jump up here and talk with me? Were you the type of person that wanted to go outside and get in a group for a performance? Or were you the type of person that would sit back and take the notes and just document what was going on? Or were you just somebody who would like to get up and rearrange the room? Think about which one you were, because that's probably how you're going to act in the workplace or in the relationship. Okay? What is type preference? Where does it come from? Have you heard of type preference before? Has anyone here done Mars Briggs? Has anyone here heard of Mars Briggs? <laughs> there was a guy called Carl Jung, J U N G. Pronounced with an Irish accent, it's Carl Jung. He was a Swiss psychologist at the turn of the century before last, 1897. He was around the same time as Sigmund Freud. And they both had different theories on how people prefer to operate, what the core was that drove people. His work was actually reasonably accurate and it's still being used today through the likes of Mars Briggs and plenty of other profiling, type profiling tools that we use. Whether it's the, the team management profile, which is out of Brisbane, which is sensational, or this profile, or any of those other profiles. They work off the theories of this psychologist, Carl Jung. And what he did, he noticed that by observing people, he could guess how they were going to act under normal circumstances or stress circumstances. And the things he observed them around was whether they were extroverted or introverted, whether they were creative or practical, I'm going to use today's language, whether they were creative or practical, or whether they made decisions with their head or their heart. And he observed them and he said, well, you know what? If I can guess that that person is extroverted, creative, and a thinker, they are going to act in this way. And he was very, very, very accurate. And out of his little formula, he produced nine different types of people based on the questions that he answered. And he could give a breakdown of how people were going to act in nine different ways. He was very accurate. <coughs> Mars Briggs, got involved in the, um, Mars actually got involved in the First World War. She was a female from the United States of America. She got involved with, with, with women coming into traditionally male roles in the workforce for the first time. Right, so all the men went off to war. It was these roles that needed to be filled. How do we get people into the position so that they come in running rather than having to play around? We're at war, we don't have much time. Her and her daughter, Isabella Briggs, added one more function, and that was whether you're structured or whether you're practical. Structure of reflection, sorry. And all of a sudden they could come up with 16 different types of people and how they would prefer to act. That became known as the Mars Briggs type indicator, which was the, the start of all the other stuff that went on. What interests me today is a mixture of both of them. I'm not too worried about how we make our decisions, which is whether we're thinkers or figures, because that would know, I mean, an extra couple of days to, to get to that one. But I am interested interested in whether we're extroverted or introverted, whether we're creative or practical, or whether we're structured or flexible in how we organize ourselves. And I'm just trying to show you how, by deciding which one you are, will put you in a group of being either a doer or a talker. Okay? It is general. What I'm doing today is a generalization. In other words, if I can get 70% I'm doing pretty good. Alright? There will always be Introverted, creative, flexible people that fit 
into both groups. But in general, you will be able to work out roughly where people sit by the following form. Cross your arms, please. <laughs> Quite a comfortable task, isn't it? We've all done it many, many, many times before.
The doers, on the other hand, would prefer structured, practical tasks. They would prefer the same menu every year, where they could actually walk in, put the systems in place, and be able to call out 20 sandwiches a minute, every minute, for four hours during the day. They are very loyal, they are very dependable. They don't necessarily like change. They usually get the task done. Laziness could do this as well, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to go there. They usually get the task done provided they're left by themselves to do the task. They would prefer to work a little bit back rather than forward. They don't necessarily like meetings. They don't see the sense in meetings. Who controls the meetings? <laughs> That's why you are starting to enjoy meetings. All right? Do you think talkers enjoy meetings? Right? Because we get the talk. <laughs> So we go back to the Youngen type theory and we go back to how people prefer to do things. We could take a reasonable guess and say that extroverted people are good talkers. Yep. That creative people tend to be reasonably good talkers. That said, we can get a lot of introverted creative people as well. But creative people love talking about their ideas. And talkers tend to be very flexible. While they're talking, they say, oh yeah, yeah, we can change it to that one. Yeah, let's change it again. Oh, yeah. And they're constantly changing what they're doing. Does that make sense? So they're very flexible, they're very creative, and they're very talkative. Whereas the doers tend to be more introvert. Just leave me alone, I'll get the job done. <laughs> they tend to be very practical. If you can't see it, test it, smell it. What did you do? <laughs> this is the point, you know? Keep your feet on the ground, that's the real thing. And they tend to be reasonably structured in what they do. In other words, I have a plan and I will work to that plan. And if we all follow the plan, the plan works. <laughs> Why would we want to change the plan? <laughs> so I'm going to talk about each one of these just in a little bit more detail. And I want you to think in yourself, which one am I? Because you know what our natural tendency is? <laughs> Say again? Yeah. And we are. Right? This is this the new type of stuff says we that there's very few people that are off to one end and off to the other end of the scale. Most of us sit in the middle and most of us can be flexible and have both. Okay? You still have your preference. When it comes down to game time, you're still going to use your right or your left hand. So we need to try and decide which one is our preference. And the key to this is I want you thinking about what your preference is. Because right now what you're all doing is you're thinking of that person that you have trouble with. And it's probably going to be your partner or your husband. And you're sitting there thinking, oh, this is me. <laughs> if I could just change him, we'd be much better than him. <laughs> if you could just change yourself, you'd be much better than him. Okay, I'm sorry. Any other men in the room? Whether you're a male or a female, it's the same thing. If we can change what we do, our communication is going to be better. If we want them to change what they do, their communication stays exactly the same. It doesn't change. Their communication is better. Theirs doesn't. Okay? So I want you thinking about what you are. So let's have a look at the difference between extroverted and introverted. How can I best describe extroversion? Sounds a little bit hippie-ish. It's where you get your energy from. Believe it or believe it or not, I get my energy from being up on front of you people. And the more of you there are, there are, the more excited I get, and the more energy I get. I'm an extrovert. I lose energy when I'm left by myself. <laughs> <laughs> if we can turn it into a song, oh, it's terrible. It's terrible right? I love camping. I do a lot of camping. North Queensland is great for camping. But I hate camping by myself. I last of that. When I go camping, I look at 40 people around me, got the guitar, I say, hey, it's good fun. Okay. Introverted people, on the other hand, get their energy from being left by themselves. 
They like counting by themselves. They like going home and sitting out with a glass of wine or a coffee or a tea or a water or whatever your voice is and just relax. That's where you get the energy from. And to take an introvert up here and put them in front of all these different people, they will run out of energy very quickly because they use up a lot of energy trying to do this sort of thing. Does that make sense? I'll try and see. I don't know how I'm going to work this whiteboard. Because this room is quite difficult. It's a strong hand. <laughs> I want you to think this way. Can everyone see it or get close to see it? It's a, it's a very simple diagram, so it's just... <coughs> Imagine this being inside your head. And this being outside your head. In other words, this is thought and this is speak. Here's the way an extroverted person processes information. The information comes in, they think about it for a little bit, then they talk about it, then they think about it for another bit, then they talk about it for another bit, then they think about it for another bit. <laughs> then a well-formed idea comes out. Okay? And here's how an introvert processes exactly the same information. Information comes in, they think about it for a bit. They think about it for a minute. <laughs> they might get on the internet and then they think about it for a minute. <laughs> and then when they're ready, it comes out as a well-formed idea. <laughs> Extroverts are thinking of, are talking about what they should be thinking about. <laughs> And introverts are not talking at all about what they should be talking about. <laughs> so, here's where it gets interesting. <coughs> what is the introvert hearing from the extrovert at this point? <laughs> no. The extrovert talking. What are they hearing the extrovert talk about at this point? <laughs> Waffle? <laughs> Rubbish? There's some great words for this. <laughs> what are they hearing at this point? What do they hear at this point? <laughs> a well-formed idea. So this might be a third of an idea. This might be two-thirds of an idea. Gee, they talk some rubbish, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> Every now and again, it makes a little bit of sense. <laughs> Every now and again, they come up with something that you could actually use. <laughs> so, what is the extrovert hearing? from the introvert at this point. <laughs> what did I hear at this point? What did I hear at this point? What did I start to think about the introvert? <laughs> Anybody in there? More importantly, what did they do for the introvert? <laughs> they start talking in front of them, they? Can you get how this causes problems in relationships? <laughs> it is probably the key relationship problem maker that we can come across. Okay? Because the introverts think an idiot. <laughs> the extroverts think an idiot. <laughs> and both of them are just sitting there going, this is ridiculous. Why are they both in a room with this person? <laughs> I want you to think about your relationships. <coughs> Are there any introverts in the room? Who, people who think they may be introvert. <laughs> What's it like when you come home from work and you have an extrovert person standing inside the door waiting for you? <laughs> How was your day? Does it cause problems in your relationships? <laughs> yes, it does. Yet nobody in school ever told you introversion and extroversion causes problems in relationships. <laughs> they just said, oh, you're just in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> 
looks like having a baby. Off you go. <laughs> I'll give you an example. I met a, um, a couple who owned a business, a very successful business. He was an extreme introvert, and she was a very gorgeous extrovert. When they go out with her friends, now when they go out with his friends, she's very talkative to his friends, because you know what? Extroverted people will talk to anybody. They don't care who they are. They'll talk to anybody and have a conversation about Kermit the Frog. They really don't care what they're talking about. You know why? Because most of what they're talking about is what? So, when they go out with his friends, she talks to everybody and everything works out great. Because extroverts have lots of acquaintances. Very few close friends, but they have lots of acquaintances and they're very comfortable around them. Yet, when they go out with her friends, do you think he talks to them? Because introverts don't like talking to lots of people. <laughs> introverts will have two or three really close friends. And around those really close friends, they will be very extroverted. So when he's with his mates, da, 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 this is great fun. When he's with her mates, why don't you love me, dear? Because <laughs> when I go out with your friends, I'm mad. And that's a loving thing to do. But when you go out with my friends, you won't even talk to them. And they did. The program with me, and they suddenly went, oh, no. So you're comfortable when you go out with my friends and just sit back and have the wine. Very comfortable. You go and do your karaoke. <laughs> okay. Even when I play the songs and sing the songs that you like, you don't care if I like them or not. <laughs> I don't want to get up there. Okay? See when you want to go and dance? No. Happy, sit back, have my beer. Very comfortable. I'm very comfortable in doing that and I'm happy. Okay? When they started to get that idea, they started to realize that just because you're extroverted doesn't mean happiness comes from being extroverted. And just because you're introverted doesn't mean happiness comes from quietly sitting down and enjoying yourself. There is no right or wrong. There is only a different way of doing things. And when they start, when you start to learn which way is different, it works. So if you run a talk shop and you're an extroverted person, don't beat yourself around the head every day when you go home because nobody's singing songs with you. Ah, <laughs> 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 yes! <laughs> so that's your way, not their way. And if you're an introvert, please try and understand the person that comes in and sings songs. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what's making them happy, right? It's a balance. And your job as conveyors is to be the responsible person. <laughs> there is a, be the responsible person in that balance, right? And try to blame it. Waffle does it, and however, waffle creates ideas. And it's from all those ideas that the thinkers or the, 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 the doers get them and then they take it away. So we have to encourage the talk. That said, the waffle can be a bit of a if we could train everybody in this and we could use extroversion and introversion, which I deal with with, with comments, all you have to say to people is, been a little bit extroverted today, aren't you? <laughs> and they get it. You're not telling them to shut up, you. Okay? It's a little bit extroversion. <laughs> and it has a much better effect. <laughs> so again, just try to understand. Let's talk a little bit about introversion. Introverts, introverts prefer to think before they speak. In other words, when they say something, it's usually a well-formed idea. I am not saying it's the right idea. I'm saying it's usually a well-formed idea. Yet, we don't allow introverts to speak as much as we should, because they need space. For me, that was hell, okay? I just left it in space. 
and then every extrovert in the room, they almost do. <laughs> I think I should say something. <laughs> but every introvert in the room just sat back and went, finally, a little bit of time to think. <laughs> Allow introverts to think a little bit more and make sure when you have your meetings or you have your get togethers that somebody facilitates it. And remember, you are the responsible person in any of these meetings because it's your don't show. You facilitate whereby you make sure that the introverts get that information out. Because any information they have is going to be very well thought out and very well put together. Yet, an extreme introvert wanting to say something in a meeting may simply be, and if you miss it, or it may be, and if you miss the second one, they'll go home and tell their partner, nobody ever listens to me. <laughs> Say something that's usually well thought out. We need that information in form. Do you get introverts and extroverts? Do you have an idea whether you're an introvert or an extrovert? Yes. Do you get the concept that most of us are in the middle somewhere? Yes. Remember, introverts will be extroverted around people they know. So when you hire them because they're nice and quiet, and then they get to know you. <laughs> There you go, you're quiet and it's out of the window. Okay. And alcohol makes everybody an extra. <laughs> That's why clubs are so good for getting people together in relationships. And it's funny, what you get at the pub is never what. <laughs> what they turn out to be. <laughs> Gee, you were happy last night. <laughs> The second part I want to talk about is whether people are creative or whether they're practical. Practical people need to be able to see it, taste it, smell it, touch it, or feel it for it to exist. And if they can't see it, taste it, touch it, smell it, or feel it, how could it exist? Creative people only have to think about it for it to exist. Dance, quick it up. <laughs> my, my only rule for mobile phones is the phone goes off, you have to leave it ring and then you have to go up and dance to it. <laughs> Every introvert in the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> the extrovert to turn the volume off. <laughs> you ring me first, and I'll ring you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be my dance. <laughs> Okay. 
You would imagine most people in advertising or marketing are creative. Yet, I went and did work with a very, very good one of the top advertising companies. And I thought they would all be creative. It turns out they were all practical. And I said, how can you be an effective advertising company and be practical and not be creative? He said, it's funny you say that because that's our biggest criticism, is that we're not creative. <laughs> but people keep coming back to us because we deliver. Yeah. I said, how do you do your ads? He said, you're on the internet. We copy somebody else's ad. <laughs> There is some logic to it, okay? The world is becoming more creative as we go along. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that our schooling was more practical than it was creative? Have you noticed the schooling now is becoming more creative? Because it's in the creativity that the new solutions are coming out. And that advertising that Jonathan was talking about earlier on, although I joke about it, if you don't become more creative, the companies that can afford to pay for it, the Coca-Cola's of the world, the, 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 whatever pie shop, I won't use the name of the pie shop, whatever pie shop, whatever sausage making, whatever lolly shop, will beat you. Because you can't stay practical and move forward. The world is getting more creative. Do I agree with no, I don't. And I'm a very creative person. But I think there's got to be a balance between Slow down a little bit and just you know, do the worst. Again, think about how creative you're being asked to be in your businesses <coughs> and whether there is such a need for it. My own belief as a business coach is that 80% of what we do can be structured and practical. The 20% is where the magic is. That's the little bit we can change around. If you get that formula wrong, you're not going to deliver very well. Because if 80% of what you do is creative and 20% is practical, I don't need to say anymore. I think you get a bit of money. That said, if you go 100% practical, you're going to be in trouble as well. Because the kids will simply stop buying off. They've changed now. Okay? They will stop buying off. What does that mean at the end of the day? No job. Who's right? Who's wrong? P and C's attract who? <laughs> Talkers, creative people. And probably the reason they got involved was to come in and change things. Yep. Because they see from the outside, ah, that can be a change. You know what I'll do? I'm going to join the P and C and I'm going to change it. That's absolutely fine, provided as the responsible people, the took shop members, provided as the respons responsible people, you control their creativity. That may mean gathering a little bit more data, like Jonathan said. That may mean having the data at the back of the works. Okay? Because when creative people come in, they don't come in with data, they come in with creativity. And they make sense because they're good talkers. So you've got to balance it. You've got to be able to sit back and say, well, okay, I hear where you're coming from. However, if we look back over the last two years, what you find is the reality, the real, so practical, the reality is that we actually only sell about pies to about 20% of our customers. And 60% of our customers are buying healthy foods already. So just because one person has a perception that their child buys a pie all the time, doesn't mean all the kids are buying top pies. You have that practical data in your mind that says, no, what we can do is we can make sure we keep that. And we can make sure there's always going to be people who are going to eat pies. What do we do to shift the school across just to change things around without wanting to change the world? Because creative people want to change the world, and practical people want the world to stay just the way it is. Does that make sense? It's funny you can carry on from that and say, the creative people are taking over the world, and I am a creative person, so should be people. But because they're so creative, we've lost trust with them. And if you notice 
have a big task in our society. Who here trusts a politician? <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to do things differently. <coughs> oh, what's climate change? Stuff that they're doing is different. We have lot, there's lots of other stuff that goes along with it. But the gap between what we think will work and what we want to work and what they think will work and what they want to work is growing. And that gap is trust. Does that make sense? So I'm not saying they're necessarily creative. What I'm saying is that then by them changing what they're doing, we're all sitting back and saying, why? Why change? And, uh, and that's the challenge of cook shops. Why change? If you don't get why you need to change what the rest comes into the issue of it. Um, once again, what's that? This creative person. <laughs> <laughs> why don't we just leave things the way they were? <laughs> flexible and structured. Talkers tend to be more flexible, doers tend to be more structured. So let's talk about a structured person. They like to plan in advance. Let's just say, for example, I didn't marry, you think of yourself back at school or college or anywhere where you have to do an assignment. And it's Monday morning and you've been given the opportunity, or you have to have an assignment in on my desk by 3 o'clock Friday. If it's not on my desk by 3 o'clock Friday, you fail. There's no extensions. Okay? 3 o'clock Friday, it's Monday. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how a structured person would approach that and how a flexible person would approach it. The structured person would have a look at what needed to be done. They'd read the question and they would decide fairly early on Monday how they were going to answer that question. Let's imagine there's about two and a half days work in it. That structured person would then put a plan in place of all the steps that needed to be done to achieve <coughs> They will probably have a draft ready by Tuesday afternoon and the assignment will probably be finished by Wednesday afternoon. <coughs> Learned behaviour says they won't hand it in until Friday morning, but technically they can hand it in on Wednesday afternoon. It's done. Flexible person on your hand. Says how much work is in? Two and a half days. Okay. When does it have to be in by? <laughs> 3 o'clock Friday. I'll we'll probably start Thursday at that point. <laughs> Doesn't it quite a few and a half days for it? Okay. So, one night, they have a little bit of a think about it and they go off and they break off. Or they do whatever needs to be done. Tuesday, they do the same. Wednesday, they do pretty much the same thing. By Thursday morning, they're starting to get a little bit stressed. By Thursday lunchtime, they switch on. They do not sleep Thursday night. There is no draft. And at 2.59, they come running around the corner. <laughs> there it is. They're both delivered by 3 o'clock. Who's right or wrong? Here, you say, nobody's right or wrong. Until you're one of the other group that has to work with them. <laughs> so although we say as people, it doesn't matter as long as it gets done, the reality is it doesn't matter. Because what those people bring in, what the, the, the flexible people bring to the structured people, usually laid on a list, is a whole heap of new information. And they change the goalposts. Have you noticed that? They change the goalposts. What does that do to the structured person who now has to work through the night on Thursday night? They flip out. The flexible person does not get stressed when their back is to the wall. They get excited when their back is to the wall. They enjoy doing it all at the last minute. The structured person is completely going to be freak out about that. It's not that the flexible person is doing nothing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They are. They're thinking about it. Their information gatherers, the information's in there. They're just going through their head to the last minute and then they go Phew. and they put it all together. So they don't make the decision until Thursday. They are thinking about it. They just don't do it until the end. Does this cause problems in the workplace? Yes. Yeah. Alright? And I want you to recognize that it does cause issues. 
And I want you to recognize which one you are. Because when you go in, and much is at one o'clock, and you have, you're a structured person, you have your plan on what you're going to do, and the four volunteers that come in to help you are flexible. <laughs> How your stress levels going to start going? <laughs> they, the sandwiches might get done, they might not get done, because sometimes flexible people don't get them done, unless you put a real deadline in. Structured people will usually get done. What can we do about that? How can we try to change that? Anyone got any ideas? <laughs> we give it a structured approach, okay? We did exactly what I told you a little bit of a while ago. 80% of what you do can be structured. 20% is flexible. So, they can talk while they're doing the structured stuff. If you sit in and say, look, there's room for everybody in my time, shall we? We all get to talk and be creative and be everything, but at the end of the day, we have to serve sandwiches. And to serve sandwiches, we have to be structured. No matter how much I would like to get up here and talk about all the things I want to talk about, if I didn't have a structured approach, you guys would get nothing out of it. How I got lived, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but only 20% because I'm on a deadline. <laughs> so putting that in place and saying, look, we do need to have a structure. structure. That said, if you're a structured person and you try to over-structurize what you do, you will lose volunteers like that. Right? And if you don't give structure to the people who enjoy structure, you will lose volunteers like that. So to, to, to keep your volunteer, it, 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 I know I've got an hour to talk about something that we can spend days on. This skill around communication and keeping everyone happy. That's what communication is. Keeping everyone happy. Not them keeping you happy, you keeping everyone happy. They will repay that to you along the line. But the art is to try and find out, well, how do I keep them? How do I not keep them? Young people like jobs. So the chatter wants to do, you know, like maybe, you know, say that's not out of court for the end of the touch. The person that comes in quiet and gives them a job that they focus on and they want to use, you've got the same That's it. You know, it, it, none of this is rocket science. It's a science, but it's not rocket science. If I haven't tried to do anything you don't already know, and I can tell that by your giggles. <laughs> you've all been there, you've all done it. So if you need to come up with something new for the menu, give the creative people that to do it, the practical people to produce the stuff you always produce. If you have extroverted people, bring them up front. Let them talk to the kids. Well, because the kids... <laughs> <laughs> and the reason you're not laughing is because I'm right. <laughs> Let them, they enjoy the kids, they enjoy it all that. Let the creative people make the sandwiches to order with the little fancy things on top of it. In fact, the people just make chicken sandwiches with a bit of cheese and a bit of lettuce on top. That's what the kids want. Does that make sense? Yes. None of this is what it's on. You can do this today. You can walk out of here today and start implementing this stuff straight away. Flexible people, I've already spoken about them. <coughs> the talkers, just to sum it up, you know, they, they like gathering information, they like reporting information. They, they, they love experimenting with ideas. They, I'm a creative. I come from a family of creatives. We have recipes, wonderful Irish recipes. Not one of them has ever been written down. <laughs> and I don't think one has ever been cooked the same since. <laughs> and I love choices. <laughs> I love cooking, that's my passion. I really enjoy cooking. My wife loves me to go to cook. <laughs> when I'm not talking, I'm cooking, singing. <laughs> but I never cook out of a recipe. I like going to a restaurant, figuring out what's in there, coming back and creating ideas. Yet, I know people who cook to a recipe every day. You get it? Some people are practical, really. Um, Talkers get very excited. They will control your meetings. And they will control your meetings with what? Waffle. <laughs> Unless you keep 
keep putting them into line. You need to allow them to waffle because the waffle is the interesting stuff. Sometimes. <laughs> However, you need to put them into line and you need to make sure the introverted people are giving time for all kinds of If you're going to have meetings or you're going to have discussions with your groups, don't just call them on the spot if you're a creative person. Because or if you're an extrovert person, because the introverted people like to give them a little bit of notice. Give them a bit of notice, tell them what you're going to talk about, and then they'll come and talk about The doers, for God's sake, just let them do. Let them sit in the back and do. If a doer comes into your organization, don't do what I did earlier on. Give them a task of moving the chairs, and then saying, oh, actually, <laughs> that was a con job. <laughs> You're speaking today. Because they will walk straight out the door and they will not come back. And nor should they, because they don't trust you. Okay? So keep the doers doing jobs, keep the creative people creating jobs. So to sum it up, number one, learn your own preferences. Number two, remember that your preferences are not the only preferences. They're just your preferences. They are neither right nor wrong. Some people hang on to their preferences like you wouldn't believe. Understand your teammates' preferences. This is where it starts getting a little bit harder. Just try and figure out, particularly around whether they're flexible or structured, or practical in what they do. Can I give them the right tasks? Provide options. So when people come in to volunteer, provide a few different options and think about the options that you're providing them. Some doing options and some talking options. Which one would you like to do? That means your volunteers will come in and meaningfully be engaged in what they want to do, not what you want them to do. They are volunteers. Okay? If we give them the roles that they can do. Your first option should always be to work with preference. To define what roles in your business are doing roles, what roles in your business are talking roles, and then matching people into doing and talking roles. Have I helped you at all today? Yes. What I would like today to do for you more than anything else, is to just start with a spark in your head that says, can communication really be broken down into a science? It can. Take the time out to learn it. For example, do you realize that when we communicate, only 7% of our communication is the words that we use? And that's either written in the text, or an email, it's only 7%. 53% is our body language, and the other 40% is tonality and smell. Okay? Remember that when you communicate, most of your communication is coming from the book. The next thing you need to do to become a better communicator is to go off and start reading one of those body language books. Because <laughs> <laughs> they will have a very profound effect next to this in how you communicate. I've got one minute left. Has anybody got any really good questions they can ask? <laughs> yes, you can be both. The old theories, so the younger type theory, Mars brings and that sort of stuff was quite popular. That's what you are either extrovert or introvert. The truth is, very few of us are one or the other. We are all in between. Okay? And it's just, if you're right in the middle, Right now, so hard. You need to just try and figure out which one you're being and why not. If you're right in the middle, that's a gift. Once more, you can tell. Can't you? Thank you very much. Love you, man. Thank you. Thank you.